You're listening to Moon Monkey with Matt and Andrew. On this episode, we're going to be talking about Kingsman, the Golden Circle. Uh, so it's directed by Matthew Vaughn, and Eggsy's back. Eggsy's back. He's now a full secret agent in yep. Kingsman. And there has been yet another attempt to destroy the world, and this time it's Julianne Moore playing Poppy, the drug dealer who yep. has wiped out all the Kingsmen and has forced Eggsy to go and seek out statesmen in America to yeah. stop Julian Moore from taking over the world because she's holding the President of the United States hostage and everybody else because she's infected all the drug users with this virus that is pretty deadly. Kingsman's back and yeah. uh, attempting to she's stop running Moore. A, she's running like a drugs empire so that anyone that takes her drugs she's laced it with something that gives you like a like you start getting uh, turning blue yeah, and then you start dancing and then you die. And then you die. So if you um, don't get the treatment soon Pretty uh, fatal. Yeah, it is pretty. Fa- it's hundred percent fatal. So she's holding. She's holding like uh, the United States ransom. She wants it to be legalized so she can be recognized for the the tycoon that she is. Yeah, with. it's very much kind of the typical over the top Bond villain, like in the first film, like riffing on James Bond. So she's got a kind of secret hideaway. Is it in South America or somewhere? Somewhere. In it's the like jungle. in the jungles, um, and it's like the Aztec style. But she, but for some weird reason, everything's 1950s themed because she likes the 1950s. Yeah. So you've got 1950s diner, There's a bowling theater, alley, a bowling alley. Yeah, that robot, was just a robot weird, tattooist. Yeah, that was kind of a weird thing. Yeah, and she's got robot, uh, robot guard dogs, a robot, yeah, stylist, robot tattooist, and she's basically running this kind of multi-billion or trillion-dollar drugs empire around the world. And I think is she not? Is there not part of it? She's trying to make them legalize. Yeah, that's what she's trying to do. Yeah, so she can be recognized. So she can be recognized. Yeah. Whereas at the moment, she's like the most successful businesswoman in the world. But nobody but knows, knows it because she has to hide in the jungle and talk to robot dogs. Yeah. So it basically brings back a lot of the characters from the first one uh, with Eggsy and Mark Strong, um, and then because the Kingsmen are. But it's shown in the trailer, so not really a spoiler. Yeah. Because they're kind of wiped out, you also have new characters as well coming in. Yeah, as they, well they, as all the statesmen. They, the yeah, they bring in like uh, they bring in Jeff Bridges, he's like the head of head of statesman. They've got a uh, Halle Berry doing the Merlin character but yeah. in America. And they've got um Pedro Pascal who's like from who people probably know from like Game of Thrones. Yeah, who plays a viper and the, the agent from Narcos, which he's really good in, and they've got Channing Tatum as Tequila. Which, if you're going for Channing Tatum, don't expect a lot of Channing Tatum because he's yeah. not really in it a lot. But you do see him do a funny dance. Uh, that was so, the main reason. Yeah, he was there. Um, and they've all got code names which are um, alcoholic <laughs> drinks yeah, really. because they're in their secret bases in a distillery and a giant whiskey. Yeah, bottle. as opposed to like Kingsman, who are all like tailor shop. Yeah, but they're not named after. Things to do with tailor, tailoring. No, they're not. Not, <laughs> not as exciting. So yeah, I, th- I thought that was one of the one of the fun things about the film that you kind of saw in the trailer was seeing the difference between like the British and Americans because it's always a kind of source of humour, I suppose. Like, oh, Americanisms versus Britishisms, and in this you have the sort of the Kingsmen have the umbrella, but the Americans have the lasso, or the Kingsmen will have like a certain code names, but the Americans all yeah. have, like, alcohol code names. So it's kind of fun to see that and see how the two different sides operate. Um, for me, I didn't particularly enjoy this film as much as the first one, and we'll probably get into the reasons why. But, like, it's it's weird because... Even though I didn't enjoy it, I can understand why people would because a lot of the elements are returning from the first one. Like it, it, it is. It does just follow straight on from the first one. A lot of the humor, I suppose, is the same. Again, it's like some of the same characters that you like from the first one, and the same kind of action, the same kind of stuff. What don't you like about it? Basically, for me, it just went like a little bit too over the top and unbelievable. So, like the main. The main things for me were, one, the story I didn't find was as strong as the first film, or I didn't feel like they did enough with the um, kind of British Americanisms. It wasn't that at all. Like, that wasn't really the story at all. And I just found Julianne Moore's kind of plan wasn't as interesting as the one in the first one. And the other the other thing which was 
why I didn't like this so much. The first one that it was just too kind of silly and cartoonish. Like with the robot dogs or... Like the first one had stuff which obviously wouldn't happen in real life. But it was kind of just taking James Bond, Roger Moore level silliness and amping it up a little bit. But this just went way over the top to the point this where... This is past Moonraker. Yeah, to the point where you can't take this seriously at all. I feel like so. they know they're doing that because they immediately go for like... I don't know if it's Moonraker that has like... What's the the, the submarine car? Is it Moonraker mm. the submarine car? Well, it's one of the Roger Moore ones anyway, isn't it? I thought that was the... Um, Timothy Dalton it's one of the 1980s ones, maybe it was yeah. but anyway that, that got a lot so of criticism yeah. doesn't it like the, the yeah. submarine car driving out onto the beach and everybody's like oh and they did that in basically the first scene and yeah. Kingsman 2 is they have a submarine black cab I like that bit though yeah. that, that bit I didn't have a problem but I feel like they know, that, a, I know, they know they're amping it up to the point of like oh, oh yeah. the worst part of James Bond they're I doing understand it. like it's a really fine line to walk between like comedy and like going a bit too far with it and I think this film just sort of overstepped the line and went too far with some of the, some of the things that were in it. I really liked it. Maybe I don't I don't like it as much as the first one because I think the first one had a lot of charm and stuff and certainly yeah. it didn't have charm in every aspect but it had charm in certain places with the kind of British spoofing of spy movies but I think with this one where they kind of went to America and tried to give it Kingsman the American remix and have all these big American actors come in. Whereas before it was like a very, like, when I, I think when First Kingsman came out, um, The Secret Service, it was like, oh, they had Colin Firth, yeah. but everybody else was kind of, you wouldn't say like Mark Strong's really a big draw to a lot of people. Like, I think he's a good actor. But. I think this might have, might have even played better if it was later on in, in the series, if they yeah. had made some more Kingsman films uh-huh. about them, like British yeah. spies the British, like, if you'd have learned a bit more about the Kingsman in this film, yeah. whereas it's basically, like, wipe out the Kingsman, let's start now yeah. with the Statesman. That, that's one aspect I didn't like, but I did like the movie overall, because um, I think it it, it's, it was very over the top, but not even in the same kind of ways. I feel like they, they even toned down the violence slightly. I know, like, people go into meat grinder at one point, but compared to the first one, like, with the church scene, like, that was really quite a big violent moment that a lot of people thought maybe it was a bit too much. Yeah. They don't have anything like this in this one, but they do have the, the they kind of play up the gadget. But again, the villain, like, and it's not Julianne Moore's fault because I felt like Julianne Moore was really, really good in this, but Did she's you... very separate to everything that's going on. She never interacts with the Kingsman the same way Samuel L. Jackson does before they yeah, actually they have a showdown. Yeah, do it. It's a big cast that isn't really yeah, used in the best ways, but they... I think they're obviously setting up for another one if they're going to do another <laughs> they one. They maybe tried to do too much, and like you say, Julianne Moore, like, they're all kind of, it's like they're all probably filmed separately. You don't get the sense that it was like a big collaborative all working together. You don't get that sense that they're, the world kind of holds together in the way the first one did, where almost everyone interacts with everyone else. I, d- I don't, for me, like, it wasn't even that. It was just, like, it wasn't as as threatening as Samuel L. Jackson's one to destroy the world. And it was just, again, Julianne Moore was very separate from her plans and actions. Yeah. She was just in the, the 50s diner, very far away from everything. Mm. It's like, in the first one, you had Samuel L. Jackson, they'd have dinner with Colin Firth, and they'd have a Big Mac together. And there'd be that interaction, where it was this, it was like, oh, they've, they've, found, a, they've found a lair. And they, oh, they've, yeah. they've stopped her. Pretty much. This film, like, one of the criticisms I've heard of it, which I would agree with, is it seemed like they were putting stuff in this film just because, like, it's a funny idea. Whereas the first film, everything followed from the characters. Like, they, it felt like they began with the characters and built the story around those characters. Like, how would they really interact with each other? Whereas this film felt a lot like they were just thinking first and foremost of a funny idea or a funny joke and then just, like, jam it in there, <laughs> literally at one point, when uh, it doesn't necessarily follow logically from the story. It's just, oh, this is really funny, we'll fix it and we'll fit it in somewhere. Yeah, there was a lot of scenes that, that didn't really flow very well. But for me, overall, it was very funny and very entertaining. And there was a lot. there was enough stuff there from the first one, and they built on it with the characters. Like I did like the interactions between Eggsy and Merlin, and Merlin and Harry Hart, like Colin first character and stuff like that. When they when he lost his memory, and it's like how do they get him back? Yeah. From that aspect, the second one's following from the first one because it was the first one was very much hinting at the fact of class, and you know, could Eggsy be 
just because he wasn't at university and he lost his dad and he lived on a council estate or whatever, he could be the kinsman. And he still hasn't lost that as he's as he's went up in the world. He still ha- is that guy. Yeah. As well, because the first one is very much about that, and they're, they're, they're having a little nod to that in the second one. But I don't. A lot of stuff in the movie just didn't make a lot of sense. It was just put in there because it because it's like, oh, remember in the first film he used to dress like that. It's like, yeah, but now, but it's like no, he's not really changed at all. Is essentially what you're suggesting. I don't still know, it. That's just weird. That's what I. That's like I couldn't really get my head around. Overall, it was just like a little overlong, confused, not as much focused, not as focused as the first one. It was just sort of a kind of comic, like more like a cartoon, whereas the first one was more like a movie. This was just like let's throw a lot of funny stuff in, and some of it, some of it really works, and some of it doesn't. So for me, it was kind of hit and miss. Um, but if you if you enjoyed the first one, like you'll enjoy seeing the characters again, and it's got sim- very similar style of humor and action. I liked it. I don't think it's as good as the first one, but I think it's a decent sequel. Although I wouldn't have done so much changing it from Kingsman so quick to changing it into all these American characters yeah. and losing that kind of stuff they had in the first one. It that was the only thing. That's I'd the like. thing. The Statesman thing would have been a good idea if it had been like. You'd seen quite a few Kingsman films, and they wanted to change it up. Yeah, I but feel it's like it, yeah. you don't really need to change it up much when you're only on your yeah, second you know, film. Say, but I think that's maybe how they got to do the second one was maybe change it to get a, actually to actually get a sequel. So maybe that's why they did it. I don't know. Maybe yeah, because it's like big American stars yeah. in it and things. Yeah, I, I th- also think they could have done a bit more satire with the president thing and how he was just like, oh yeah, just let the world burn. I don't care. We'll get rid of the drug addicts. Everything will be fine. They maybe could have done a bit more of that. The film yeah. was a bit weak, but it wasn't Julianne Moore's fault. It was just the way. It was it was written. But overall, I think like it it didn't entirely flow, but it flowed well and from a comedy aspect. There were definitely parts where yeah. I where I laughed out loud at the film. Yeah, but it, it like that. That's what we're saying. Like it didn't hang together as well as a whole as the yeah. first one. It was just kind of some very funny moments and then some kind of just plot stuff going on. Yeah. But overall, I really liked it, and I'm, I was pleased that they actually got to do a second one. Because I really like the first one, even though it gets a lot of criticism for certain things, but I think it was like a good. Um, it was nice to see a second Kingsman because it yeah. does have its own its own thing of like spoofing James Bond and spoofing spy movies, and I think it's quite good that yeah. they get to do a second one. It's definitely something that, like, if they if they did another one, if it was like mm. the right story and things, they could definitely make a success of it. It's just this time the the story wasn't the strongest that they could have done. But that the kind of concept of the mm. thing I can see could have legs. Okay. Yeah. go on to be more of a franchise so that was our review of Kingsman the Golden Circle I hope you enjoyed it, make sure to like and subscribe and we'll be back again soon